All right, guys. I think I've made some success here that even I didn't expect. Um, what did I tell you I was going to do about three or four videos ago when I told you that I, before this brakes were finished, I'd be able to take a pinky and lay a pinky on one of them control rods right there and turn it? You know, I was skeptical in my mind that that would happen, but it has happened. But I tell you, this, this calls for celebration. Uh, you know, I was thinking there for a while that the dozer had demons in it, was going to have to do an exorcism on it, but it's just all in getting the brakes right. Uh, there you can see the bogey wheels. I have not mounted this top right one here, and I'm going to put another one back here because if you look underneath, the tracks are very close to the rotor. I believe that one bogey wheel right there would do it, but I'm going to just do, I'm just going to make sure and put another one here to lift up just a fuzz right there. Uh, you know, them bogey wheels fill this side in over here in between, you know, the big empty space in between the tracks and the and the um, wheels, you know, big ugly empty space. But And I put that side cover on it, you know, it'll look a little bit more like a real, like a dozer's supposed to. But the main thing I'm itching to do right now is crank it and show you, you know, there was one video on here where I pulled as hard as I could and Jim, my buddy at Jim's equipment shed, said that Rick would take three men and a little boy to pull that handle back far enough, hard enough. It don't no more, Jim. You're not gonna you're you're not gonna believe how easy it is to pull this handle now and turn this thing. You can almost just take a rubber band and wrap around it and just pull back and it'll turn. Here we go. I'm gonna match you on the tripod and get her cranked up. Uh, I don't have anything to celebrate with. I don't drink anymore. Hadn't since I was a kid, but I guess there's other ways of celebrating. All right, here goes. We'll crank it up, and as I get up close to you, I'll have, I'll show you how easy that handle pulls. All right, let's get over here and crank it. I don't know how the, I don't know if it's daylight in here or not. We'll have to see. Simply takes getting the brakes, getting the brakes strong enough. Oh boy, yeah, just too much excitement here for one day. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing this as much as I've finally enjoyed some success. Uh, you know, there won't be hardly any pressure on these bogey wheels here. As far as all it'll be is just the weight of the tracks bearing down. It won't be no load carrying. Now I know them bogey wheels; they're probably not dozer quality. But my lord, they're made to, you know, the, the, what those are, those are made to put on a big giant metal shop table that you got in a welding shop to uh, roll a big metal table around. So surely no more pressure than them bogey wheels have got on it. I don't think uh, you'll ever wear them out. Alrighty, man. I've already got all the parts I need except the chain to do the other side. And now that I can, see, you have to build this stuff as you go. And I hadn't been up here much. I admit that. I hadn't worked on it much. But now that I know how to do it, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot simpler and a lot quicker. Let's see here. Here's my big pulley that I'm going to um, reduce the speed down with further. Got it. Here's the, uh, there's the one inch adapter. New rotor. Another new rotor. There's the brake, uh, the matching brake caliper from the 03 Impala with new pads on it. Here is the bracket 
um, the disc bracket uh, that I've got started making. I made it. I made it a few days ago as, as I was making the other side. A little more trim work on it. There's the other big sprocket that it's going to require to put on the left rear. And all I need then is a piece of chain and the mini bike, the mini bike uh, bearing assembly. You know that we used here to turn the rotor with. That's what will be needed there. Uh, like I say, you know, I'm gonna run it a month or two, and if take it apart, and if them bearings go to getting loose and limber, I'll put some good grade bearings in there. But no more pressure than that has on it. I, I don't, I don't think it's gonna get no trouble. Also, now that I've got all this, uh, the bogey wheels and brackets and all in there, I can't get my come along in there to put the tracks on and off of it. So what I had to do is had to weld a bolt here and here. Screw a screw into it, screw a screw into it, that way it gets my gets my come along off to the side and allows me to pull the tracks together and bolt them together. And you know what? I bet y'all get tired of hearing me with a cold and blowing my nose, but I just keep one all summer. Can't help it. I don't know why. But I'm gonna raise the motor up about six inches. That will um, give me more space to see. The problem, the reason this belt is slipping all in the world that belt is going around on that motor shaft is about a little two inch piece right there it just ain't getting enough grip i'm gonna have to go up higher with the motor especially adding the bigger sprock the bigger pulley go up higher with the motor that way i can put an idler here and push in and go to the other side and build it to where it'll push in in other words i want that to it needs to wrap as far around that motor pulley as it possibly can because if I, I'm not going out of the garage with the dozer, but if I get out there right now in the dirt where the track cleats are digging in, as soon as you went to turn, it, the belt will go slipping. We already know that because it done it out here on the concrete, you know, when it was trying to bite into the concrete. Well, all right, guys, I tell you what, I'm just tickled pink. Uh, if you could have saw me when I first got on it, I'd been pink in color. After worrying around with this thing, I, you know, I was beginning to think, I didn't want to mention it to none of you, but I was beginning to think that the rear end had a problem. Because you see some of these other guys on here with some of the simplest brake setups, you know, with just simply a band going around the back wheel. And, uh, you know, there's turn with no problem. So I was beginning to think that it had a problem with the clutches in the rear end. But it don't. You just, it's just so heavy that... It's heavier than it looks. It's bigger than it looks. This tractor's bigger than it looks. That's why some, you know, some of y'all guys are making uh, mistakes on what you're estimating the weight to be. But um, it's bigger than you think. It's bigger than it looks. And they ain't one other than the hood. They ain't one piece of it made out of anything any thinner than quarter to half inch solid steel. You know the frame. You know that's a that's a that's thicker than quarter inch angle iron. Uh, all right, guys. Can't wait to get this put on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna back it back into place and finish up these bogey wheels right here and uh, start on the other side. Shouldn't take long, but again, again, even as excited as I am now, I'm still not in no big hurry to to get out in the yard to tear the yard up. Just going a little bit at a time. Uh, also, I put some new grease fittings right here at an angle, 45 degree angle grease fittings because it was hard to get a grease fitting in there with the wheels, you know, with the tracks mounted and pulled back. So, put me an angle fitting right there, angle fitting back there in the back. So, it'll be easy to grease that from now on. Um, all, it will always be easy to grease these bogey wheels. See the little, little grease fitting right there? I got them turned to where they're coming out to where you can easily get to them. Okay, I can't think of a whole lot else to say other than now that I'm doing it like a car um, I, I may go on and buy another master cylinder to match this one but believe me this this dual master cylinder is really what the doctor ordered because it's made for disc on the front drum on the back in this case it'd be disc on the back drum on the front so all I gotta do is just um, connect one of these straight to the small the front drum will go to the small bowl the big bowl will go to the disc brake setup. And that is a new master cylinder. It don't look like it, but I, um, it is, it's new. It's just got a little age on it, but it's a new master cylinder, so it'd be silly to buy another one, you know, even though they would match and probably be prettier. I'm also thinking about building a regular box style bulldozer seat and doing away, you know, taking these fenders off. Uh, 
you know, you know, like a real bulldoze, you know, just make it out of metal, square, but I may not. I'm just kicking around an ideal. Okay, guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Holler at you next time, okay? Be good. Adios.